what's good guys welcome back to the ECC channel I'm of course Checkmate coach of the Twickenham for Simeon and I'm your host today for today's post commentary battle of my season 10 week 2 match and team builder against Elliot coach of the Michigan Mian Shao so of course as always my team is of course my tier 1 mega of Mega Altaria my tier 1 of Magiana my tier 2 is of Celebi Momo Swine and Mandibuzz my tier 3 is of Minial Cabalion and Tentacruel tier 4 is of Verizion Moltres and Ambipom my tier 5 of Miltech my opponent this week, as you can see on screen, his team is very powerful and is very threatening. His mega is obviously tier 1 Megalopony. He has tier 1s of Thunderous Therian, Kieran Black and Tapu Lele. His tier 2s, or tier 2, is Suicune. His tier 3s of Nidoking and Alolawak. Tier 4 of Mesprit and Gligar. And tier 5s are Tangela, Kling Clang and Cryogonal. So, looking at his team, he does not have much in the way of hazard removal, or uh, reliable hazard removal, with his uh, hazard removal really being Gligar, Cryogonal, and the uh, Thunderous. And he also doesn't really have particularly good uh, reliable walls, with them being Tangela, Gligar, and that's really it. Suicune is very bulky, but it does not have access to that reliable recovery, which you really do want on your tanky Pokemon. Um, however, his offense is second to none. It, with offensive threats such as Thunderous, Therian, Kieran Black, and Tapu Lele, the, then other ones like Nidoking, Marowak, Alola, and obviously the Megalopony, you don't want to be switching into that. So, I've tried my team building, obviously with a balanced playstyle. I like to be able to have a switch into most things that is, my opponent has. And I think I've managed to do it again. So, particularly my team is weak to his Kieran Black, the Tapu Lele, Thunderous, and the Nido King, uh, all of which hit my team very hard. And Nido King, particularly, has coverage uh, good enough to uh, uh, really threaten my entire team. So, I'm going to really have to watch out for that. Uh, I'm particularly uh, solid, however, against things like the Krygon or the Tangler and the Mesprit, with reliable checks to, or fairly reasonable checks to all three of them. So, uh, not particularly expecting those. Uh, my opponent, however, he is weak to Magiana and Verizion. Now, Magiana particularly um, has a very good matchup with his best response being the Alola Marowak, uh, resisting both of my stabs and a lot of the coverage that uh, Magiana learns. Now, Verizion has a fantastic uh, speed matchup against him, and it's Offensive stabs aren't bad against this team either, so looking to exploit either of those will be my main two win cons. Um, looking at the, or against the team, we, well, he's pretty solid against my Ambipom, Tentacruel, and Moltres, um, particularly with things like Thunderous, Kyurem, and um, the Megalopony, uh, and also the Nido King. They're really able to threaten uh, all of those three really hard, so they will be. Uh, less important in terms of the matchup. So, looking at the opponent, my opponent's weaknesses this season, uh, this week, uh, he doesn't actually have any checks to ghost types. It's and his only resistance is actually the lop honey. Um, but as I don't have a ghost type, I can't really exploit this. So, from that, I'm actually going to be going a little, more, a little bit more creatively. So, going over the team I decided to bring, I opted to bring my Magiana, Altaria, Celebi, Verizion, Miltank, and my Mandibuzz. Starting off with the Magiana, as you can see, it is very good against its team with its best check of, as I've already said, mentioning uh, the Alolawak. So, weakening the Alolawak is going to be a pretty big priority. And then Magiana is a very good shot at pressuring his team late game. So, this is going to be my primary win condition this week. I've opted for a modest uh, max special attack variant, which is able to pressure his team the most, and it's going to give me the best opportunity to get that soul heart boost and potentially sweep. So, as you can see, I've opted for a shift gear variant, so at plus two, I can outspeed a lop honey, uh, which is designed to um, speed creep my minion. So, with the extra bulk that I have, I'm able to take hits a little bit better and just splashed a little bit into special defense. So, for the rest of my investment, as I said, I put it into HP, and that just allows me to take a hit better to allow me to shift gear up. Alright, so moving on to the 
Altaria. It's mainly there as, an off as a defensive check to Alolawak and Lopani. Being almost fully physically defensive, it's very good at checking these two, and that is its primary role this week. And with its fantastic Dragon Fairy typing when it's Mega Evolved, it has a fantastic typing and it's able to check uh, Choice Locked uh, Thunderous and or potentially Choice Locked Thunderous and Kyurem as well. Um, uh, should they be locked in, potential, potentially things like Outrage, or even Choice choice Scarf, Choice Specs into things like Thunderbolt or Volt Switch. So I've got a small amount of special defense, just helps me uh, take a hit a little bit better on the special side. And it actually makes it very unlikely for Sludge Wave from Thunderous to actually be able to Oko me. Um, Earthquake in return hits his team very hard, and Roost is there for a lot of recovery. Ice Beam is there so I can actually hit the Gligar so I'm not essentially walled by it which stops him from being able to get free recovery stealth rocks defog up against me without me being able to really do anything so that's really good for me and actually means that it's going to be able to stop his uh, supportive capabilities as such not being such a speedy variant this week being a defensive set I can actually opt to run the minus speed nature which gives me uh, the ability to use both of my offensive stats which is going to be really helpful uh, continuing on into my next mon, I've chosen Specially Defensive Celebi, and this is one of my primary Lele checks. And fully Specially Defensively allows me to take any hit that he wants to go for, and I, unless he's something like Specs, he shouldn't be able to Turk KO me. Seed Bomb deals a little bit more damage to him than a Special Attack, so I've opted for that, and it also is able to deal consistent damage to the Suicune as well, should he be a Calm Mind variant. And Teching Worry Seed is also really nice, because it'll give him Insomnia, which will stop him being able to go for rest, of course. So, moving on, Dazzling Gleam is there to guarantee being able to break a Kyurem Substitute, um, which he would easily be able to go for on the Celebi. He potentially had U-turns or Grass Stab, potentially even Psychic, and he wouldn't need a lot of special defense or bulk investment to be able to get around that. So running the Dazzling Gleam also enables me to break that thing stuff, and it also enables me to hit the Lopani for super effective damage and get close to a 2 at KO. Recovery is obviously there for longevity, and certainly to the Altari, I don't actually need most speed this week, so with the minus speed nature I can actually opt to uh, utilize both of my offensive stats, which is going to be really helpful. So, moving on to Virizion. Virizion is a uh, physical sweeper. Uh, Sword Stance Life Orb with enough speed to outspeed a Max B Cryogonal. Uh, not particularly expecting it, but I'd rather outspeed it than not. So, it has a fantastic matchup with obviously there's only one outspeeding it being the Lopani. So, having a uh, Life Orb Sword Stance variant is actually going to be really effective against him. And I can set up on various things. Fighting in grass coverage against his team is also very strong. And I don't need anything other than Stone Age as well to be able to hit his whole team effectively. Um, so yeah, very simple set for Vrizion this week. And it's got a simple role of just being a, a ball breaker. Uh, break his team apart a bit and enable... Uh, Magina obviously to get a potential late game sweep, or maybe even the other way around. Magina breaks a bit and allows Parisian to uh, clean up late game. I don't even need an SD to be able to do solid damage output as well, which is really going to help uh, actually break his team apart. Uh, moving on to Miltank, uh, it's especially defensive, making up my especially defensive core with the Celebi, and it's also there to check the Kyurem. As you can see, my team this week is pretty pressured by it, and although Thick Fat doesn't actually make any difference to the Kyurem, it means that I'm going to be able to take on the Nidoking very, very effectively as well, being able to actually not to it KO by anything that that thing wants to go for with this uh, spread, unless he's choice specs. And it also enables me to check the Cryogonal again, which I'm not hugely expecting, but Ice against this team I've brought is pretty effective, so uh, it, it wouldn't be the... Uh, the biggest surprise, I have to say. Uh, it does, 
being obviously specially defensive, it does make me a little bit more vulnerable to the Megalopony. But hopefully with the physically defensive Megaroll Terrier and spoilers physically defensive Mandibuzz, uh, they should be able to check the Lopony effectively enough for this not to be too much of a problem. Obviously Stealth Rock, this is my rocker this week. Milk Drink is there for reliable recovery. Body Slam does some reasonable damage and it obviously has that chance to paralyze with Hammer Arm there able to break a Kirin Black Substitute and it also is able to deal some solid damage to that Lopony of course. Um, so yeah, it stops the, well it's, it's, it's essentially designed to check Kirin which is a fairly big problem for this team as I may, as I say. Finally, as I've mentioned already, we have physically defensive Amanda Buzz rocking the Rocky Helmet and has a moveset of Foul Play, Toxic, Roost and Taunt. So Foul Play deals solid damage to the uh, basically this whole team. So I don't really need any other coverage, which is going to be really nice. Um, I won't really be able to hit things like the Tangler or the uh, Lygar particularly hard. But with Roost, with Foul Play, I'll be able to chip them down, especially with that Taunt as well, stopping them getting a reliable recovery. Um, Roost obviously there for longevity. Toxic and Taunt also threaten his bulky defensive mons, such as the Suicune, and actually enable me to wear those things down for late game. So, yeah, the Rocky Helmet's there to wear down the offensive threats, such as the uh, Lopany, of course, which should he want to go for a fake out on me um, he's going to take a solid 70 he's probably going to take more damage than I am to be honest and I'm able to take easily two adamant hits from him which I'm expecting him to be so yeah Mandibuzz has a very simple role and it's going to be very effective at doing it I'm expecting it to live either forever or until the end <laughs> so yeah looking forward to it so yeah that is the team overview for this week Make sure you tell me what you think about it in the comments below. And now we are going to move on to the battle. So, uh, yeah, pretty excited for that. Alright, so we are in the replay of the battle now. And as you can see, my opponent Elliot has decided to bring his Nido King, Marowak Alola, Suicune, Megalopony, Thunderous Therium, and the Gligar. So, of course, he has not brought his Tapu Lele, and he has not brought his Kieran Black. Which is good. It reduces some of the pressure on the Mill Tank, so Mill Tank can sit in front of the Nido King absolutely fine. And without the Tapu Lele, it reduces the, again pressure off of Mill Tank and it reduces the pressure off of Mandibuzz, which is predominantly there, so he just couldn't spam Psychic. He had to think about what he was going to do. So, looking at his team, he has a few ways of killing the. Uh, Altaria, of course. Being physically defensive, it's there to check the um, Marowak and uh, Lopany. Um, I should be able to live any hit from Thunderous and uh, probably not Nido King, to be honest. It also pretty much infinitely walls Flygar, assuming he does not have Toxic. So Magina looks like has a really good chance to sweep. Um, obviously, Marowak could be a problem. Um, it's probably going to be the lightning rod, so, well, but he could be, I guess, rockhead if he wants to manage or wants to take hits. Uh, wants to not take any recoil from flare blitz, of course. Uh, Megalopony is a problem. Uh, from what I've seen, he likes to bring power up punch on it, so I'll be expecting that. But Mandibuzz should be able to take it on very well, uh, despite that. Uh, Thunderous is a problem for my team. Uh, obviously, with access to Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt, he hits my entire team neutrally. Or, well, yeah, he's my entire team neutrally or super effective just with those two moves, so it could quite easily be a double dance variant. Um, Gligar's there, probably physically defensive to sponge a hit from uh, Altaria, but he, I guess he could be specially defensively uh, to check Magirna, but um, we do carry obviously Ice Beam for that. So, yes. Uh, his main way of breaking Mandibuzz is going to be that Thunderous. Uh, if we can manage to knock that thing out, then we stand a really good chance of uh, winning, because I'm not sure how he's going to be able to break it without that. So, starting off, he's going to lead with his Thunderous, and we are going to lead off with our Altaria. So this is a fairly reasonable matchup for me. 
Uh, he of course could have Sludge Wave, but unless he is uh, Specs, there is absolutely no chance he can knock us out. So that gives us a great opportunity to just get our Mega Evolution up and we can just click Return and see what his switching is. So that's what we're going to do. And he actually decides to stay in, so he actually does Sludge Wave and he immediately gets a... well, there was a 25% chance to knock me out unfortunately with the Sludge Wave, showing he is obviously Choice Specs. Oh, this of course unless he is modest, but um, that is a really bad turn one because we've now lost our best switch into Marowak, which we know absolutely nothing about, and obviously it's a great check to the Lopany as well. So we are going to have to work out a way of checking those. So we're essentially battling here with five Mons, but because I know that's choice specs, I can easily go into my Magina and we can check to see if. His switching is the uh, Marowak, which it is. So we're going to double into our Mandibuzz, and we're going to threaten him with a Foul Play, uh, which he doubles into his Thunderous for. So we get a nice bit of chip up on that, and we're going to go into our Celebi, uh, predicting him to go for the Volt Switch or a Thunderbolt, which he does. He goes for the Volt Switch, and he's going to go straight into his Marowak. Now he's got two Rockers on his team. Uh, assuming Nido King isn't, which is the Marowak and the Gligar. Now, that Flare Blitz did absolutely nothing. I was kind of expecting about 50-60% off. So that shows he is not Vic Club, which... Uh, it's kind of unexpected, I guess. But uh, we'll see what his item turns into a bit later in the game. So just going for a taunt on the Suicune. He obviously outspeeds us anyway, but it means he can't set up uh, abundantly, uh, and as he doubles into his Gligar, we're going to go into our um, Mill Tank. Just going to set up our rocks. He's going to go into his Megalopony, and he is able to just fire off either a return or a high jump kick. So, going to go into our Celebi, um, hoping he's going for a high jump kick. He does just go for the power up punch, though, so that worked out for us. Because we do resist that and get basically all back with leftovers. We also have we don't actually do that much to him with our only offensive attack or best attack being Dazzling Gleam for him. So if he does, I just like to go to plus two there. We could have been in a really big problem. But he decides to just stay for plus one and we can turn KO him. So he's going to knock us out with the second return. And we're just going to go hard into Mandibuzz because Mandibuzz can knock him out with a foul play and we can easily any return. So perhaps our best play there was going for the Roost and letting him knock himself out with the Rocky Helmet. But... It's not a huge problem because we should be able to roost up against basically the Suicune and the Gligar anyway, which is what we're going to do now. So our Manda Buzz is back at a good health. And as he defogs, or after he defogs and goes for the U-turn, we're just going to go into our Mill Tank, just essentially set up our rocks again. And he's going to go into his Thunderous. Now, he can't knock me out with anything but Focus Blast, so we're going to see him knock himself into Focus Blast which is again a problem, but it does give us an opportunity to go into a Verizion, and this is an SD Verizion which puts in a ton of work against him, outspeeding his whole team uh, outside of Scarf Nido King. Uh, so we're just going to go for the Leaf Blade. We could have SD'd up again, which would be fine. It doesn't really make an awful lot of difference. Uh, we're just going to Turk here with the Leaf Blade, and the Gligar is down. So he immediately switches into his Nido King here, uh, so I know it's going to be Choice Scarf. Um, I did not want to risk the Fire Blast and switch into my Magiana there. So I just sack off Poison Ivy and I'm just going to go into Magiana, which actually gets an opportunity to shift gear up, which is going to put me in a great position. So as you see, go for the shift gear, boosting our speed by two as he goes hard into the Marowak. Now, we s know that he is not in fact the Lightning Rod. So... This gives us, an op we know we need to outspeed the Nido King of course, we don't outspeed it at plus two, being it's scuffed. So we need to get another shift gear up so that he can't just go into it and revenge kill us, because there's no way we're going to be able to get two shift gears up again. So we're going to take this opportunity, we have a couple of options, uh, firstly shift gear up again and it's a, uh, depending on its spread, max HP, it's actually a roll in our favour to knock out this Marowak. Uh, with the Gigavolt Havoc. Uh, secondly, we could just go for Thunderbolt or the Gigavolt Havoc and try and KO him, or knock him out immediately. Um, 
or we could switch right into our Manda Buzz on the Flare Blitz, get some Rocky Helmet Chip, and see how we go from there. So, we don't know this Marowak item at this point in the game either, so uh, he could actually be something like the uh, uh, Kebia Berry to reduce super effective ghost type attacks because um, uh, Megiroff uh, obviously gets uh, Shadow Ball um, so he could actually be the ghost gym which we were, which we were actually before uh, uh, changing over to Electrium um, so that's something he could be which uh, I, I decided he's probably something along those sorts of lines so you can guarantee take that hit so we're going to go for a shift gear and he's going to go for the flare blitz which is really good because he doesn't knock us out and he actually does less than I expected to uh, which suggests that he, or no, he does about what I expected to but it shows that he is uh, max attack so he's not uh, spadef invested at all so this gigavolt havoc should be able, it's a roll to knock him out we go for the gigavolt havoc and he actually turns out to be a salt vest and that is essentially game over um, I didn't think about it at the time. Um, I forgotten that assault fest is even a thing. Uh, so we're just going to go for a roost. As he's going to go for a stone edge. It does nothing. We're actually gaining actually a little bit of health from that. But we're just knocking out the foul play. But it just means that thunderous can come in and revenge kill us with a thunderbolt, and that is good game to Elliot. So there was a few uh, turning points in that game. Obviously, turn one was a massive turning point for me because it essentially meant I was uh, battling uh, Elliot with only 5 mons which uh, was very difficult to do having something that could switch into potentially Thunderbolts as well with uh, as the uh, Altario is really nice but it also was able, would have been able to put in a lot of work against that Marowak as well and pressure the Gligar obviously having uh, Ice Beam it would also been able to switch into the uh, Lopany as well because we would have been able to knock it out with a return so uh, it's only missing those uh, or pre mission, missing out pressuring those mons is a problem for me. Um, aside from that, I'm pretty pleased with how I played. I don't think there's anything I would have done particularly differently. Um, uh, so, yeah, it was a well played, very well played game by Elliot. He did some excellent prepping. And uh, I look forward to uh, battling him again, obviously, in the rematch. So, uh, look forward to that. Um, so unfortunately we are now 0-2, which happens to be exactly how we start every season, so <laughs> I guess we'll just see how it turns out at the end, but um, yeah, it was an uh, enjoyable game, and uh, as I say, look forward to playing them again later in the season. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button, uh, subscribe for more UCC content from uh, myself and other coaches. Uh, the weekly recap will be going up uh, late this week, unfortunately, uh, as some battles were late to uh, be played. But, um, yeah. Next week we play Flo and the Alcoholic Alamomola. So, we need to obviously watch out for his baton passing shenanigans. But apart from that, I'm going to uh, leave it here. So thank you very much for watching. As always, leave a like. If there's any... Uh, constructive criticism please leave it in the comments below and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Laters!